Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Astro Chat episode. Today we are going to take a look at a rather interesting topic, prison. How is it that people end up in prison or in confined situations and when do they get out of these situations? Now, I want to take a look at this because one of my lovely viewers out there, who's a dear friend of mine, wrote a few comments on the last December Outlook and she wrote about Julian Assange and her comment is, could you please have a look at Julian Assange's chart to evaluate if he has a chance to get asylum in France? I'm French and his father was making a campaign in France not that long ago. And you've also written, which I really love, you say that, you know, I have no connection with him whatsoever beside the respect and admiration I have for him regarding his courage to fight for the truth. And I wanted to say to you that I have that exact same respect and admiration for this incredible man who has found his calling. He is living his calling. I don't know if you remember, I think a few videos ago, I did this thing about jobs, career and calling. And I even mentioned Nelson Mandela uh, in that video. And we're gonna have a look at him in this video. We're gonna have a look at the chart of Julian Assange. We're gonna take a look at Nelson Mandela and the chart of Martha Stewart as well. And there are lots of other examples that I could go through, but in fact, if you've got any really good examples of, or names of people who've been in extended um, periods of time in prison, that'd be great for me to know because I would like to study some more examples. These were the two that sprung to mind, Nelson Mandela and Martha Stewart. I studied them because I wanted to see, all right, when did the whole prison thing start for them and when did it end? And it's really interesting for both of these examples. I am able to see astrologically what's happening. But with Julian Assange, I've got some handwritten notes here and I'm so sorry to say I don't have too much to to say and there's an important reason as to why. If we take a look at his chart, you'll see that he was born at 3 p.m. on the dot. Okay, so that's 3 you know, 15 zero, zero. So when I see a time like that, that's a red flag for me because, you know, was it, was it 2.58, was it 3.02? You know, uh, I don't trust whole numbers like this. I think, well, hang on a minute, this is not a precise time. This could be a, a roundabout sort of a, a figure here. If he was a client of mine, I would be able to go back and forth, ask some questions, find out, okay, you know, was this, was this really the time? Because of this 3 p.m. time, I'm not able to use Vimshotri Dasha. And Vimshotri Dasha is one of the tools that I rely upon. I really need it in order to be able to predict, especially near-term kind of things. If I move the system back 10 minutes, if I move his... Um, birth time back by 10 minutes, Vimshotri Dasha will jump by almost a couple of months. So you could imagine if I try and make a prediction across these next few weeks, I'm going to be out. It's just not going to work. So I'm not really able to make any prediction, unfortunately. What I can tell you is that when I look at the transit wheel and when I look at the Samudya Ashtakavarga table which is stable even if I change the times by a bit around the 3 p.m. mark. I can say that I think there's a, an amazing window of freedom for this man from 2025 onwards for about five years. I think his whole life should improve uh, hopefully quite a bit. I know that's far away, that's really really far away because the question is about the now, the question is about what's happening to him now. And I can see why there would be a lot of concern. And that is because Mars is moving to be virtually on top of Julian Assange's natal Mars. So this is something I can say with confidence. I can say that um, I think 
he's going to have a really tough time, actually, I think, from the 1st of April to the 7th of April 2022. And if, like me, you're a fan of Julian Assange and you know you, you want to see him safe and well and free eventually, then this is a really good time to pray for this man. The dates 4th and 5th April in particular uh, are very concerning dates to me. And what I think is that that would be really good is if we could pray for him. And, you know, this thing of prayer, how do I pray for someone? Well, for me, how I do it is I just visualize them really happy and healthy and strong and free. I visualize that person at their best and just, you know, that that's it. That's that's how I pray for someone, for anyone, you know, just see them at their best, see them happy, see them healthy, radiant and free. And that's it. That's that's what I do. And if we can collectively do that as a group on the 4th and 5th of April, that would be really amazing. I think that would help him a lot. There are a lot of really great spiritual channels. I know Amanda Ellis, she often does episodes just devoted to Julian Assange and they're beautiful episodes. She draws cards, she does all kinds of things. She's very intuitive and amazing lady. So I do like to watch those videos as well. There are lots of people who um, from time to time they focus on him and just send their love and light and their good energy to him. So definitely we can do that here. Maybe I'll, hopefully I'll try and remember, maybe I'll put something on Instagram or something like that, um, just to remind everyone. Now there's also the charts of Nelson Mandela and Martha Stewart. I did have a look at both of these people as well. And it's really interesting when we look at all three of these people, actually, with Julian Assange, one of the things that we can say is if I use the Vimshaw Three Dasha that I have here at 3 p.m., let's just use that. We can see that he went in, uh, I think it was 2012. If we have a look at that, that Saturn, Jupiter is active. So Saturn is the Lord of Rahu. Okay, so we can see that his Rahu Ketu axis is active. All right, and what I've seen with both Nelson Mandela and Martha Stewart is that Rahu Ketu axis is active. Now with both Nelson Mandela and Martha Stewart, you'll see that Rahu is in the 12th house. So that's very interesting, okay? So it's like their north node, their north star is, their destiny is requiring that at some point these people have some form of isolation. They have to, it's gonna be part of their life. So if I didn't see the name Nelson Mandela, well, let's start with Nelson Mandela. If I didn't see, his name there and I'm just looking at the chart, what would I say? Would I be able to say anything? Well, I wouldn't predict um, that they'll be in prison. I, I wouldn't say that Nelson Mandela would be in prison, but what I would say is that during Ketu Dasha and during Venus Dasha, this man will have karma to pay. Okay, that I can say for sure. And I would probably phrase it that there would be career-related karma to pay. What, what have I got written here? Career-related isolation is what I've got here. We've got Rahu in the 12th house is active. The Lord of Rahu is Mars in the 10th. And that's in Virgo of all places as well. So this is a very strong Mars that would sacrifice a lot for career. And that is definitely what Nelson Mandela did, he, he sacrificed so much. Now he was in prison from 1962 to 1990, that's 27 years. So if we have a look, that's Ketu Dasha and that's Venus Dasha. He had karma to pay. What kind of karma? It was past life karma, that I can say. I can't say what exactly, maybe through you know, him working with a specialist in past life hypnosis and that kind of thing, you'd be able to figure that out what that is, but I, I can't figure that out, but I can say that this is in connection with past life karma. 
It's also interesting to see that 1988, when Sandasha became active, he was moved to a different prison. So there's a change there. Then 1990, he was freed. Now, this is interesting because the sun Dasha is active. Who's the lord of this sun? It's moon in the 11th. So one of the ways that I'm seeing that is that his wish was granted, you know, for freedom. And that's what happened there with Nelson Mandela. It's also interesting that this son of his has absolutely no connection with that Rahu Ketu axis. Okay, so the karma had been paid across that 27 years. And as soon as he steps into a brand new dasha, a brand new life opens up for him really. So that's a pretty amazing case there. And we don't even have to open Vimshotri dasha hardly, you know, to see what's going on. It's, it's written there quite uh, plainly for people to see. Let's take a look at Martha Stewart. I'll just have a look at the time. Okay, we're doing okay. Uh, Martha Stewart. So. She was found guilty in 2004, March 2004. I remembered reading about this case. I read a biography, some, somebody wrote this biography. It was a bit gossipy, but I, I read it. And uh, yeah, it, it was about all this whole thing as well. And from what I read and from what I saw about this case, she wasn't really too guilty of anything. She just got some information. She sold some shares and made a few thousand dollars. She made a few thousand dollars and she lost a billion dollars. So it was a massive loss. And I think what happened with her is again, it's some kind of past life karma is at play here. Because really when you look at all three of these people, well, especially Julian Assange and Nelson Mandela and, and Martha Stewart as well. I mean, she didn't do anything really that bad. There are so many people who are walking around today who really should be behind bars and they're not. And we know why, Kali Yuk, we know. But, you know, with Martha Stewart, what did she do that was so bad? All right, she sold some shares, made a few thousand dollars. But we can see that it's some kind of past life issue at play here as well. Because we've got Ketu conjunct um, Mars there in the sixth and her Rahu is up there in the twelfth. Again, Rahu in the twelfth, just like Nelson Mandela. July 2004, she served a prison sentence of five months. Now this is quite interesting. We can see that in Vimshur 3 Dasha. She was running Rahu, Venus, Mercury. So that we can see that this is a work-related thing. Mercury there in the 10th. Rahu, Venus, Ketu was active. So again, it's that line. The 612 line is active. Then it got broken by Rahu's son. That's when she's out of prison. So that is quite interesting because again, the sun breaks it. And again, the sun has got nothing to do with this Rahu Ketu axis. Isn't that interesting? So she then had two years of supervision. I think she had to be at home and wear an ankle bracelet or something like that for a certain time, I don't know. So what's the deal with that, that two years of supervision? Well, that was Saturn's eighth from the moon transit. And that's a really interesting transit. I've gone through that myself just, I don't know, a few years ago. And yeah, it's not a great transit. This is, and it's a difficult transit. It's also a transit of massive career change. This is very often where people, and this was when I changed from, you know, working in companies to doing what I'm doing now. It's not an easy transit. It can be quite challenging. So it's really interesting to see with the cases of Nelson Mandela and Martha Stewart, where I, I am able to use both Vimshur Tri Dasha and the transit system, and as well Ashtakavarga. Let's go, oh, well, Martha Stewart, the Ashtakavarga points, that is quite interesting because she had her roughest years when she was running some of her lowest points. So that was cancer. She, she had 25 points there in her Samudhya Ashtakavarga, not great. Uh, and, you know, the time when she was accused, I think that was, yeah, really low points there as well. So it's really interesting. We can see 
these things. We can see when someone's going to be isolated, for example. I remember working with someone, her entire moon dasha, and she's a Western astrologer, and I did a reading for her, and I was able to say that, yeah, for all these many years, you're going to be isolated. She lives in a very remote place. And uh, she's wondering, when am I going to move? And I said, well, I think you're going to be there for many years yet. And she is still there. So that is happening. And I accurately predicted another time of isolation for someone uh, a few readings ago. Where I, was able to, I was able to see through the Dasha system that you know, during these various months, you would have been isolated. And that was the case. So we can see these things. But with Julian Assange, because there's an entire system of mine that I love to use, which is, I can't trust it. We've got a time of 3 p.m. and the jumps are too great. So I won't be using uh, that system to predict when is he going to be free. But even just looking from a distance, from a big picture point of view, I mean, we can see that 2025 onwards for five years, the life should improve massively. And then we've got Ketu Dasha begins 2031 onwards, according to this Vimsha 3 Dasha, which I can't trust, but it's something. I mean, again, we can see another really big shift there. So I'm not able to say when he's going to be free, but I am able to say on the 4th and 5th of April, if we can all just hold the best thoughts for him at that time, that would be really amazing because I do think he might be going through a bit of a tough time then so i think i'm going to leave this video there everyone but thank you so much to my lovely viewer who asked the question uh, and if ever you've got a question like that just let me know and i'll try to you know throw a video together as i've managed to do today but thanks so much for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you next time